Okay, so the oxidation numbers. So as you can see, it's being progressively reduced all the way down. So effectively gaining two electrons here, gaining six electrons to go to there, gaining eight electrons to turn to the hydrogen sulfide. So it's constantly being forced to take more and more electrons by the iodide. In terms of spotting this, so as you just saw with the, the sodium bromide one, sulfur dioxide, brown fumes is given off. Sulfur is a solid, it's very dark purple, mainly just looks black to the eye. And hydrogen sulfide, it's colourless, but the way you notice it, it smells like rotten eggs. As soon as you stop smelling the rotten eggs, either A, you're safe, or B, you're about to die. Good luck. Again, just as I mentioned, don't try and remember sort of all three reactions in full for this. You should be able to spot that the I- minus would go to I2, so you, sh you can write a balanced half equation for that fairly easily and then just work out the half equation for the other one for what you want to go to so an example H2SO4 going to H2S so just oxidate so balance the sulfurs oxidation numbers electrons hydrogen ions water as you've done previously stick them together it takes all of 30 seconds one minute at most but it saves remembering equations in full, fairly tough. So final bit for the group seven is the uses of chlorine. So yes, was used as a chemical warfare weapon during World War One tends not to be in the mark scheme though so main thing just kills microorganisms so the way it can do that and when you react it with water you will get chloric acid and hydrochloric acid so the chloric acid here is a strong oxidizing agent so that is the stuff which will go out and kill any little pesky things in your drinking water, swimming pools, etc. Things like that. Now the reason why they don't sort of want to do this as much is, as we've just said, that kills people. You do not want pipes with that gas going around everywhere. Any leakage and you've got a serious problem. So the way they can get around this... you can instead react chlorine with a base. So it can be any alkali, sodium hydroxide is the common one. So you get two salts, you get your sodium chloride, your sodium chlorate and some water as well. This, uh, when it's dissolved, when it's aqueous, is typically what's in your household bleach. That's an oxidizing agent, will kill stuff as well. But you can also get it into a solid form, a little tablet. just so you can separate them and again when you chuck this tablet in water you end up with the chloric acid so that can be used to again kill the microorganisms so if you've ever been camping backpacking things like that and you've bought the little water sterilization tablet it will quite likely be that so you chuck it in the water and it forms that questions around this sort of why swimming pools need to be an acidic ph well look this is an equilibrium so if you add an acid, 
equilibrium will move that way to release more base, releases more of this, so it keeps killing stuff. Notice I've avoided using the word purifying. If there is any floaty solids about, the, the chlorine will not get rid of them. Sometimes can even react with them and form even more toxic compounds. It only kills the microorganisms. So that is it for group seven.